Money matter the way you do. It is not fine. I prefer do the way you do. It is not fine. Let me see your hands up. Let me see your hands up. Where your flag? Where your flag? Where your flag? Where your flag? That's right. That's right. That's right. In some policy, the nation will not. The 24 hour economy is coming live. Thank you very much. God bless all of you. And let me thank everybody for this fitness walk. This walk is the beginning of the launch of the campaign for 2024. And I expect that all the regions will also do their version of this walk. It shows that NDC, we are healthy, we are ready for the campaign of 2024. Even the rain has not been able to stop you. All of you who have walked today from the starting point to here have done six kilometers of walking. And that should put you in good health and prepare you for the job that we have ahead. We're going to go from door to door, from house to house, from market to market, taxi ride to taxi ride, trotter station, kitchen, chop bar, everywhere. Ghanians are, we're going to go there and send the message of NDC. It's a long time since I saw King Ayusuba. It's a long time since I heard his, uh, his song. But his message is very instructive. My father, the way you do, it is not fine. The way you do, it is not fine. Every day and every night, I suffer money matter. The way you do, it is not fine. I prefer do the way you do, it is not fine. So I tell you, my Kufa, do the way you do, it is not fine. But when you the way you do, it is not fine. This day is up on 7 December 2024. I know that Dungwa and Teshi have fishing communities and all of them are complaining. The way premix ni ame jakeha fisha mene. Akwe neke premix eba, akeha ha chairman, a no women's organizer ko. Neke fisha mene a aya he premix ya hairdresser. Ke oba oba safe koni premix e fisha mene ada. to talk about two in three initiatives and I talked about it the, when we went to Iowa Swiss work on an adenta the first is the national apprenticeship scheme as I've said before not all our children are imbued with the same mental ability you can have the same children sitting in the same class when the teacher te teaches one is able to catch it immediately and so we think that he's smart He's knowledgeable, he's intelligent. There's another one who is slow to learn. And so we might do an exam, the sharp one will continue to university and all that. 
But it doesn't mean that the one who does not catch it very quickly does not have the talent that God gave him. Take those two. The one you say is slow and the one who is smart. Put them in an environment where they have to use their hands. And you find that that other one is better able and more skillful than the one who gets A in class. So all our children have a talent that God gave them. So it cannot be that we give free education to one group all the way to university, and yet when the others fall out, they are left to their own fate. Not all of them can go into the TVET centers. And so our strategy would be to introduce the National Apprenticeship Program. So that for those who are not able to continue into tertiary education, they'll be able to go into an apprenticeship and learn a skill with their hands so that they can also find work. And if you have to learn a skill under the National Apprenticeship Program, it will help you to be able to establish something for yourself and be able to earn an income. And I said that even if your intention is to go outside the country, if you have a skill, it is an advantage for you. Because if you are a mason, you are, it's easier to find work as a mason. If you are a carpenter, it's easier to find work. If you are a welder, it's easier to find work. So when we introduce the National Apprenticeship Scheme, I expect that all our young people who are idle and not doing anything, they are not in education, they are not in employment, at least they'll come into training so they are able to uh, learn a skill under the National Apprenticeship Program. The second one is our women. Our women are a major driver of this economy. If it comes to trade and commerce, our women dominate that sector. And most of the time, all they need is just a little credit, 1,000 Ghana cities to be able to use as capital, to be able to do their uh, uh, business. And yet there is no helper. The traditional banks won't give them support. And that's why NDC says when we come into office, we're going to create the National Women's Bank. will have outlets in the major markets and everywhere that women have their small and medium enterprises. So that the little credits that they need, the 500, the 1,000, the 2,000, the 5,000, that bank will lend it to the women and as they pay to be a revolving fund and will be given to other women and they will improve their circumstances. Because women form the majority of our population the population census has continuously shown that women are 51% of our population, more than the men. And so we're going to give this focus so that they can be able to resolve their issues. 24 hour economy, number three. crisis. We cannot turn the fortunes of this country round as fast enough if we continue to work only from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And that is the point I'm making. If we continue to work only from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., it will take us decades to turn this economy around. And so we need to be running, not walking. And our opponents say, oh, but some people are doing it already. Fine, some people are doing it already. But there is no policy that incentivizes people to do it. That's all I'm talking about. And so we are going to introduce the policy that gives incentives for more business people and manufacturers to adopt the 24-hour economic policy. Because if we incentivize them and they add on additional shifts, even if it's only one shift, if it's even only one additional shift, that will create additional employment for young people. Our unemployment rate is unacceptable. It was just above 8% in 2016. Today it's 14.7%.
And so we have to deal with the unemployment situation. All those artificial job creation uh, uh, policies have not worked. You recruited young people for national uh, the NAPCO program. Up to today, you haven't even paid them their arrears. And speaking on behalf of the NAPCO trainees, we beg you, they are on their knees, pay them what is due them. And so finally, about the election and our constituencies, all of us who are capable must volunteer to train as party agents. So who, wherever you are, if you are an accountant, you are a banker, whatever profession you have, if you are capable, please volunteer. We have to train you. However intelligent you are, if you are not trained in the electoral process, you will not be able to police the poll for us. So if you submit your names, it will be submitted to the elections directorate. We will know the polling station where you vote. So on that day, you are not just going to vote and go back home. You are going to vote and you are going to sit there and protect the ballot for the NDC and the people of Ghana. And so you will sit there and protect the ballot for us. And please, none of us is going to sleep on 7th December evening until all the ballots have been counted. I don't want to call any constituency executive and your phone is off. It is not the duty of the elections directorate. It is the duty of the chairman, the vice chairman, the secretary, the organizer, youth organizer, women's organizer, and all the executives to stay awake for 72 hours, you must not sleep until the results are declared. And I wish to assure Ghanaians that we are going to protect their ballots. Vote for the NDC and your, ba your ballot will not get lost. We will police the poll and make sure that every single vote counts. And so please let's all gear up for the election. This fitness work has been very good because we don't do a lot of physical activity now. Today you see young people and they have kidney disease, they have liver disease, they have diabetes. It's because we're all seated, we're not walking, everywhere we go, we go by car. And so we must do a little physical activity. If you do physical activity, it prevents you from getting hypertension and, and, and diabetes. And those are the things that trigger kidney failure and other uh, sicknesses. So please, let's get active. Let's get involved in fitness. And I want to thank all of you who came. 27th July, we are launching the campaign for 2024. the 7th July, we are launching the campaign. And once the campaign is launched, there is no sitting down. The campaign is for all of us. It's not for Joshua Labi, he's the campaign manager. It is not for your constituency campaign task forces. It is not for your regional campaign task forces. It is for every one of you. In the spare time you have, wear your t-shirts. We're going to send you leaflets and you go from house to house and distribute the leaflets to your neighbors and tell them the message of NDC. That NDC is going to come and solve this economic crisis and create job opportunities for our unemployed youth. We will change the hopeless situation that has been created by this administration. And as I said last week or a week when I did the media encounter, it is not us who are asking for accountability. The people of Ghana are asking us to hold this government and the people who have stolen from the people of Ghana, we should hold them accountable. It 
It is a demand from the people of Ghana that anybody who has misappropriated the people's wealth must be held to account. Anybody who has captured state property illegally must be held to account. And so, it is not a threat, as Nanajin said, it is a promise. But let me sound the caution that as we hold them accountable, we will hold our own people to accountable if they do the same thing. So on 27 July, Tamale is the venue. The national campaign is going to be launched in Tamale on 27 July. And so as many of you who can be in attendance, please, you are warmly welcome. The victory of the NDC is coming again, and it starts in Tamale on 27 July. I thank you very much, and God richly bless all of you. Thank you. All right, thank you, regional organizer, Nelly Acknowledge, the vice chairman of the